camera. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. Usually you get some kind of a little ding sound when you're live on Google. No, no. The new Google update, you have no ding. Your dinger is broken. Where was uh, my ding? I've li I have your ding-a-ling, your ding, I do not know where it is. That is Chris Stell, our behind-the-scenes queen. Uh, friends, we start with a little bit of humor, as we always like to do, because Fukushima, it's the grimmest topic ever. How about that? I agree with uh, Chris Busby, uh, Dr. Chris Busby, for those of you that I don't think I give any sources. Uh, Chris Busby is the single worst disaster in all of human history. Why? We'll do some commentary before we get into what is going to be a very big update, full of sources for all of you that want them. Our DNA, forever, forever, how about a million years, forever, is changed due to what has happened in Fukushima. Cancer rates have already gone through the roof, particularly thyroid, particularly thyroid in children. Cancer. It's a really big deal, and it's not, uh, it's not my imagination. Hello. At low def, they can tell you by the lower third that shows up. I'm not a physicist. I'm a political commentator. Yes, I've been to college. Yes, I have a degree. I'm not an idiot. But guess what? I'm not a physicist. I'm not. But you know what? I'm smart enough to know how to read what physicists write. I'm, far to, I'm smart enough to know, or fart enough, there you go. I'm smart enough to know that um, I can look up who Karen Silkwood is. I can look up what radiation does to you. For those of you that say, oh, it doesn't matter. Sam, it doesn't matter. We're all going to die of something. That's not what radiation does. Uh, I should. It, it does. You'll get. You'll, you'll get to cancer that you think is coming anyway. You'll. You'll get that. But it decreases your entire quality of life. You're always sick. You're always getting over something. You're always trying not to get something else. It destroys your quality of life for good. The more radiation that you get, the worse the quality of your life will be. We have a meltdown going on. We have a meltdown going on in Japan. A meltdown, we all know what a, a meltdown is. A melt through, which is when it goes through the containment vessel, likely into the water table, which gives water to all of Japan. Japan, of course, sends their food here. We don't do proper nuclear testing in this country for all three kinds of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So, of course, we eat it. It hits the water table. And, of course, there is now the melt out. For those of you that don't know what that is, don't feel bad. I told you I was not a physicist. I didn't know before, before a few years ago. That is when the core just blows up and goes into a black, filmy goo, which you can find uh, reported on heavily from Arnie Gunderson at, uh, at his website, another source. Um, it, it's when the core blows up and blows out and emits massive doses of radiation to anyone that comes anywhere near it. Um, th th this is an ongoing disaster. And uh, I wanted to uh, point this out here, simply info from uh, fukuleaks.org. Fukushima Daiichi, one worker dead, radiation spike on August 1st. Uh, this is this is real new here. A worker reported, this was only published on the 3rd, so it's breaking almost as we go live here. A worker reported on the on-site office saying that he felt unwell. There's links all over this. He was transported to a walkie hospital and died soon after arriving. TEPCO has given no further details about what kind of work he was doing or his cause of death. On the same day, a dust monitoring at uh, monitoring post 2 alarmed, then went back to normal. TEPCO, which is General Electric, who you never want to invest in, is trying to dismiss it as being caused by noise. 
They also reported no work until a uh, no work excuse me at Unit One was underway at the time that monitoring posts one and three did not alarm. Other incidents later found to be significant included brief and isolated monitoring alarms. Let me ask you something. What is and a shout out to chat.simplify.org. Um, let me ask you something. What do you believe more? That a person mysteriously just happened to die. I mean, it just happened to happen when, wouldn't you know it, the radiation monitoring device also happened to go up. But it was just a fluke accident. The radiation wasn't strong enough to go from one reactor to the other, even though, of course, we've proven time and time again that it is. Um, this, this a freak accident, right? Just like all of the other freak accidents. Uh, search massive die-off Pacific Ocean. We are seeing the effects of this everywhere. We're seeing kids getting cancer. We're seeing, I mean, at, at astronomical rates. I'm not an idiot. I know kids always have gotten cancer, unfortunately. St. Jude, donate if you can. I do. Um, we know this, but not at the rates we're seeing. Not in thyroid, which we know is caused by things like radioactive meltdowns, meltouts, and meltthroughs. Things like cesium. We're seeing bone cancer go through the roof. Guess what does that? Strontium-90. This is ibtimes.co.uk, International Business Times. A Fukushima mutant daisies, deformed flowers spotted at Japan's disaster site. One of the reasons that this matters so much is because vegetation has generations quicker than humans do, obviously. I mean, that goes without saying. Well, that matters because we're able to test what happens from one generation to the other in a lot of ways in animals and insects and birds and mammals and things that go through generations quicker than humans do. That's why mice are used so often because mice are not so genetically different from us. So you can test what happens on 10 generations of mice a lot quicker than you can test on what happens to 10 generations of humans. Clearly. Well, what we're seeing is plant life is showing massive deformities after just a handful of generations when they've been exposed to any of this. And if you think that doesn't affect you, you're quite wrong because it does. Uh, and for one reason, because of the food that gets sent over. Good example. Uh, many of you know that I was just married. <clears throat> We ordered a bottle of Plum Fuki. Uh, my, my friend Gooch, a lifelong friend, uh, likes to call it Plum Fucky. F-U-K-I. You can read it however you wish. Um, the Plum Fucky, if you will, is an, an import from Japan. Made with, you know, obviously, plums from Japan. It's uh, probably the best wine you've ever had. And uh, if I hadn't just been getting married, I wouldn't have had it then. I, I avoid anything from Japan. Well, how many of you, before I just started telling you about it, didn't know? So you're sucking down California raisins, which, of course, is getting juiced on the West Coast. You're eating sushi. Maybe you're drinking a lot of plum fucky. Well, you're, you're going to be fukied because that will accumulate in you. It does, you can't really get rid of much of it. Yes, things like bentonite clay will help you get rid of it. Uh, high dosage of vitamin C will prevent some of its damage. But in the long run, it will do what it did to these daisies. And uh, it's alarming, friends. It's really alarming. I wish I could afford uh, uh, Adobe Premiere because I'd put these images up. Photographs of deformed daisies are doing the rounds in cyberspace four years after the deadly Fukushima nuclear incident in Japan, of course, which they told you was over, you were safe. The white flowers are claimed to be the latest in a long list of victims which have experienced deformation over nuclear disasters. The images of the deformed flowers were posted by Twitter user at San Kado, uh, that's underscore K-I-A-D-O, from, I'm going to try, Nashor Shoyobara City, located about 110 kilometers from Fuku. 
The tweet the user posted read, The right one grew up split into two stems to have two flowers connected each connected each other. He was speaking in Japan, it's translated. Having four stems of flower tell tied belt like. The left one has four stems, grew up to be tied to each other, and it had the ring-shaped flower. The atmospheric dose is 0. 0. 0.5 sieverts per hour at one meter above the ground, which is high. It's not enough that they're going to say that you need to be alarmed, but clearly, if it is doing it to something as large as a flower, then it's doing it to something as small as the cells in your body. Don't tell me otherwise. That doesn't make any sense. It would be bad science for you not to listen to what I just said. Cellular, cell, cellular structure, even if I can't talk, cellular structure is the same among all species. I mean, you have different kinds of cells, but they are affected in the same way. They are deformed and mutated and uh, made into things like mental retardation in humans. These things happen in all species. You can see it in the, the uh, commentary piece I'm giving you right here. That's why I'm talking into a camera at 4.11 in the morning. According to gardening experts, the abnormal growth that distorts the heads of daisies and other wildflowers is caused by a hormonal imbalance called fasciation or cresting it is a relatively rare condition, yeah, until you get a meltdown, of abnormal growth in vascular plants. Fasciation may cause plant parts to increase weight and volume. In other words, a nuclear distortion. In other words, this is what's happening in your body every day. And this is the report that you're not getting anywhere. Um, face it, friends. I get several thousand hits. That's not enough to make any money on. So I'm not out here doing it for the money, although that would be nice. You can donate. That always helps. That keeps the cameras up to date. But um, no, we do this because it matters. And it matters because this is an ongoing disaster that nobody is reporting on, nobody is talking about, and yet it's affecting your lives in every way that I'm telling you about it. So let me sip this. And we're going to go on, friends. Share this. You're learning it from me. Share this. I didn't create it. I'm telling you what the facts are. Japan's parliament panel greenlights military deployment law. If the parliament backs the bill, Japan's self-defense troops will be allowed to engage overseas for the first time since World War II. I'm reporting on this as part of the massive Fukushima update because this is not a good time for Japan to go to war when anybody knows that a fart would knock over Unit 3. If any of these four reactors get so much as, uh, uh, literally, if wind breaks on them, we could be looking at them collapsing. And then, of course, the plume that would go upward is indescribably bad by any words that anyone's ever said. This is from RT. Despite mass protests, a key, I mean, even North Korea could even knock down one of these plants. It's that bad. Despite mass protests, the key panel of Japan's parliament has approved legislation concerning the deployment of the country's troops abroad. If the bell gets the MPs nod on Thursday, this may leave the country's pacifist post-World War II policies in the past. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who has handled this disaster terribly, and his party are set to gain a victory over the pacifists in parliament. And the trouble with this is, if any nation that they have an issue with, and of course China's uh, trying to steal their islands, and we all know that they were Japan's islands historically, um, the issue with this arises that anybody can very easily damage Fukushima and literally just destroy Japan. This is not a, not a good time for them to do this. Now, before we go on to the second half, which deals with Iran, which you're going to want to listen to for reasons I'll get to in a minute, uh, I do want to cover one more thing here that has direct to do with uh, Japan, and it could also affect the world globally. This was one of the most interesting articles 
that I think I'm going to get to during this entire Fukushima update. Technologyreview.com. It says MIT Technology Review. Sam doesn't give any sources. Why should we listen to him? Russia Zam's Yeah, I gave you a source. It's MIT. Atmosphere above Japan heated rapidly before a May 9th earthquake. Now, I'm not saying there's energy weapons that are causing it to happen. I'm saying that if we ever made an energy weapon that could heat the air, and if you believe it's ever happened, it's not out of the realm of not out of the realm of possibilities. I'll say that. But beyond that, um, further, it's a sign that it's likely a, a natural phenomenon. And if you get this kind of spike, I mean, you can at least warn people. You don't need to panic people. Everyone says you don't want to say something like this because it'll panic everyone. What I would say, if I was the leader of a country, I would say, look, we have seen some data that says when the atmosphere does this, massive earthquakes happen. It may be, not, it may be nothing. Here's the information. FEMA and the militias and a lot, a lot, a lot, we'll do whatever we can, but this is the data we have. You may wish to leave. You may wish to stay. This is what we know. I think the American people would like those kind of warnings. And again, I mean, yeah, I like Rand Paul. I like Gary Johnson. I don't think any of them would simply give a common sense warning like that. Not even them, and I support them. And we're dying for someone that would talk to us that way. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm not a president, but you know what? I am someone that can read, and I know what common sense sounds like. So maybe you should look at this and then keep track of what the atmospheric data is near you, especially if you live near a nuke plant or an earthquake zone, and pay attention. See? You know, be ready. Be prepared. If it's a big enough earthquake, yeah, it's all over. But if it's a, a mid-sized to a uh, low-range, large earthquake, there's a lot you could do to prepare if you know these kinds of things. So here we go. Geologists have long puzzled over anecdotal reports, or not anymore, of strange atmospheric phenomena in the days before big earthquakes. And that's, uh, that's why this is important, the, the larger earthquakes. It says, good data go back Good data to back these stories have been hard to come by. In recent years, however, various teams have set up atmospheric monitoring stations in earthquake zones. And the number of satellites are capable of sending back data about the state of the upper atmosphere and the ionosphere during an earthquake. Last year, it says, we looked <coughs> excuse me, at some fascinating data from the Demeter spacecraft showing a significant increase in ultra-low frequency radio signals before a magnitude 7 Haiti earthquake in January of 2010. Today, Dimitar Alvnalv at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, another source, and a few buddies present the data from the Great Tahaku earthquake which devastated Japan on 11th of March. These results, although preliminary, are eye-opening. In other words, all the people that predicted this were not crazy. They say that before the M9 earthquake, which is huge, it changed the axis and uh, rotation of the Earth when it hit, the total electron content of the ionosphere increased dramatically over the epicenter, reaching a maximum three days before the quake struck. At the same time, satellite observations showed an increase in infrared emissions from above the epicenter, which peaked in the hours before the quake. In other words, the atmosphere was heating up, and uh, these observations, it says, are consistent with an idea called lithosphere atmospheric sphere coupling mechanism, for those of you that want the actual lookup. Point is, it might be a really good idea to keep track of the data regarding these things if you live in the areas that I had just mentioned. And friends, uh, that is the Japan section of the Massive Fukushima update. We're going to get to more of this and how it affects our country in other parts of the world and how nuke is just universally a bad idea everywhere we go next. Uh, before we do, though, I just want to give a shout out to Sticker Junkie. 
look here. These stickers are from Sticker Junkie, StickerJunkie.com. These are my band stickers. Go to Passing Time. Uh, go to, excuse me, the correct views at Hotmail.com, and I'll get you these stickers. They're a dollar a piece. Spend $3, I'll give you four of them. They were made by Sticker Junkie. They look amazing. If you want your stickers to look amazing, if you've got some idea, maybe you've got some message you want to get out. Maybe someone's getting married and you want to sticker the back of their car. Go to StickerJunkie.com. Get them made. They will look amazing and you'll be glad that you did. Also, friends, make sure you look up the work of Mike McLaughlin before we move on here. Great writer. Mike McLaughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Look him up on Facebook. Let him know you heard about it from the correct views. He does political rants, he does fiction, he does poetry, he does vampire stories, a little bit of everything. Let him know that you're interested in reading what he writes, and please let him know you heard about it from the correct views. All right, guys, i got a few more stories to get to. I had somebody in one of the Fukushima groups that I belong to, and I really don't remember which one. I guess I can look it up while I'm yammering here. He It implied that... Um, the comment I left regarding Chris Christie and uh, when he was talking about Iran, he was finally right about something. I really don't like the man. But he was right about uh, Fukushima. Well, somebody named Dennis, I think it's Kayani, and you're getting your shout out there, buddy, for questioning me. Here you go. It's never a good idea. Um, he wrote, let's stay on topic here, folks. Fukushima is too important a topic to dilute it with a divisive political rhetoric, no matter what the point may be. No, the point is exactly this. And this is what I wrote. I wrote, well, since the same scientists who predicted Fukushima also are saying the single worst place to build a plant is in Iran, where they are doing it, and since this will be an Arabian Fukushima, I would say that we are quite on topic. Thank you very much. Here's a news flash. Arabs glow as well as the Japanese do. My point being, this is not about, but Israel has a nuke plant. Uh, uh, Pakistan has one. It's not about that. Israel is not going to likely see an earthquake of the magnitude that Iran is. Nobody in the world is going to see an earthquake as big as they are in the next 25 years. Theirs will best whatever one is already there, and it's been predicted by the people that predicted Fukushima. And we're right in every way. The Fukushima earthquake was actually a little worse than they predicted. Let us remember, because they go up by magnitudes of 10. Also, this is not about Pakistan. Now, is it a good idea to have a nuke plant in Iran? No, because they're going to have a massive earthquake. Is it a good idea in Israel? No, they should. all nuke plants should be shut down, but they're not going to see an earthquake. The two worst places to build a nuke plant, according to the science that we know is correct, which is why you're hearing about it on the correct views, is Iran and California. And I've already gone ad nauseum of why the nuke plants that we have in California are terrible. Well, you cannot build this nuke plant in Iran. I don't care if it's fair to Iran or not. It is a matter of geological, scientific fact that Iran is going to see an earthquake that is going to obliterate their power plant, even if it's peaceful, it's going to obliterate their peaceful power plant, and it's going to kill more Arabs and poison the Middle East more than a million angry Zionists and 10 million angry Jews. Are we clear? This is not about Allah. This is not about Christians. This is not about whether or not the Jews have one. It is about the fact that Iran is going to have an earthquake that is going to melt the plant down. Are we clear? I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. I'm so sick of hearing the other argument because the other argument doesn't make any sense. Political.com, John Kerry, we will, not, we will not rush on Iran deal. The idiot has already blown it. He's almost done as bad of a job as Hillary Clinton has, if that is even humanly possible. 
Secretary of Hate, Shana Rush, John Kerry warned Thursday that the U.S. will not sit at the negotiating table forever as tensions surface between America and Russia over the fate of the U.N. arms embargo at issue in the nuclear talks with Iran. Again, no mention of the coming earthquake, no mention of cannot build there, gonna have an earthquake, gonna poison a million innocent Iranians. Iran, meanwhile, pushed back by accusing the U.S. of some of its own negotiating partners of constantly changing their positions. One Iranian official reportedly complained that the talks had devolved into multilateral negotiation to a series of bilateral attacks. You notice at no point does anybody mention the fact that the same people that we're ignoring the facts when it applied to Japan are ignoring the facts now that it applies to Iran because it's not politically correct. I don't give a damn about being politically correct. The planet, the, the, the geological facts are not politically correct. Iran is going to see a terrible earthquake and they cannot build the plant there. End of story. No argument. If you give an argument, you're just more wrong than you were before you opened your mouth to argue stupid to begin with. WeeklyStandard.com Iran made illegal purchases of nuclear weapons technology last month. So not only do we have the fact that there is going to be an earthquake there, as I have gone over repeatedly, but even if there wasn't, and there is, and that is the primary reason to not build, because that is fact, what I'm about to report here is just likeliness. Iran is breaking and have been breaking the agreements that they have signed since the beginning and then they accuse America of breaking agreements, which of course we all know America is not a saint, but we are certainly better than Iran. Can I get an amen? The question is not whether Iran can be trusted to uphold the nuclear deal now being negotiated in Vienna, because it can't. But whether the Obama administration and its P5 plus 1 partners can be trusted to punish Iran when it violates the agreement. And of course we know that we'll let them get away with anything. Experience shows that unless Iran violates the deal egregiously, which means, you know, in ways that uh, they likely will get away with unless it's of massive uh, upheaval, the temptation will be to ignore it. For instance, Iran got away with selling more oil than it should under the interim agreement. More ominously, Tehran, that is an Iran for you Tanisha fans, repeatedly pushed the envelope on technical aspects of the agreement, such as caps on its uranium stockpile, and got away with it. The Obama administration and other Western powers have so much invested in their diplomatic efforts that they'll deny such violations ever occurred. More evidence, but Iran is so honest, of Iranian violations have now surfaced. Two reports regarding Iran's attempts to illicitly and clandestinely procure technology from its nuclear and ballistic missile programs have recently been published. <clears throat> Four, they show that Iran's procurement continues a space, if not faster than before. The Joint Plan of Action was signed in November of 2013. Fear of potentially embarrassing the negotiators has pretty much prevented anybody from calling them to the carpet for it. The second report, again, do you hear that? The people that negotiated the deal might be embarrassed, so we won't punish Iran for breaking the negotiation, which all of us knew was bad, to protect the negotiators, who did a terrible job negotiating, clearly. The second report, released last week by Germany's domestic intelligence agency, is less ambiguous. Thank God. The agency, the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution, confirmed, with a link here showing you how they did so, to us that Iran continues to seek illicit technology for its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. They say they're not going to use it for nefarious purposes. Do you understand the words? Confirmed to us with proof in the link that Iran continues to seek illicit technology for its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. The last time I checked, 
Nuclear and ballistic nuclear programs were not part of bringing you nuclear technology to heat your coffee. Arabica. Iran has had a long history of trying to obtain nuclear technology from German companies, particularly by seeking ways to transport merchandise in circumvention of international sanctions. In other words, they're cheating and lying now. They're going to continue cheating and lying. It is a mathematical fact that they are going to have an earthquake there that is going to melt the plant down even if they were peaceful. And we have proof that they can't even be counted on to be peaceful with it. That is what we are dealing with from these animals over there. And then people wonder why we don't trust them. And I don't mean animals as in the average Iranian. I mean their leaders. We know exactly what they're doing. It's, it's not a surprise here. We're not idiots. Bloomberg Review, BloombergView.com Top French official contradicts Kerry on the Iranian deal. So it's not just Iran that's mocking him, and we'll get to that deeper in a second. No, it gets worse. Josh Rogan, Secretary of State John Kerry, has been painting an apocalyptic picture of what would happen if Congress killed the Iran nuclear deal. That's because he's one of the negotiators who's trying to save face. Among other things, he was warned that our friends in this effort will desert us. But the top national security official from one of those nations involved in the negotiation, France, who is normally on the wrong side of history, is right here, has a totally different view. He told two U.S. lawmakers that he thinks a congressional no vote might actually be helpful. Amen! His analysis is already having an effect on how members of Congress, especially House Democrats, are thinking about the deal. The French official Jacques Albert is no, that be Adubert, Adubert, I have no idea, is now the senior diplomatic advisor to President Francois Hollande. Before that, as the Director General for the Political Affairs in the Foreign Ministry of 09 to 14. He led the French <clears throat> diplomatic team in, a, in the discussions with Iran and the P5 plus one group. Earlier this month, he met with Democrat Loretta Sanchez and Republican Mike Turner, both top members of the House Armed Services Committee. According to both lawmakers, uh, Albert expressed support for the deal overall, but was directly disputed Kerry's claim that a congressional rejection of the Iran deal would hurt would be the worst of the words, or that it's going to hurt some diplomatic relation we have with France. Actually, here's what he said. He basically said, if Congress votes this down, there will be some saber-rattling and some chaos for a year or two, but in the end, nothing will change, and Iran will come back to the table to negotiate again, and that would be to our advantage. In other words, the French are not known for their great diplomatic prowess. I mean, they should have been speaking German how many times now? And they always get bailed out, thankfully. But, because we all see what Germany's doing to Greece. But, this is ridiculous. Iran is not in any way, shape, matter, or form this friend of the world. It is not going to be the end of the world if we get out of what is clearly a poorly negotiated deal. Even Trump has this right. Terrible deal. On Newsmax.com, Schumer, key player in stopping Iran nuke deal, McCain says. Democrats, Republicans, the French... Everyone can see that this is a bad idea except John Kerry and Obama. Senator John McCain said New York Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer, who is usually wrong on everything, would be the key player in what is likely to be a very close vote to thwart the nuclear agreement with Iran negotiated by the Obama administration. Another negotiator. At, this, at a standing room only discussion at the Hudson Institute on Tuesday, Arizona Republican discussed his own reasons for opposing what he called a bad deal with the Tehran regime. In what was billed as a dialogue on American foreign policy and world affairs, Senate Armed Services Committee Chairman John McCain answered questions posed by Hudson's distinguished scholar Walter Russell Mead on issues ranging from the Iran deal to Ukraine to, the Ukraine to tensions between Japan and South Korea. 
It goes on that McCain avoided reporters staked out of the event and in the inevitable questions about Donald Trump's disparaging comments, blah, 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 who cares? But basically, um, Chuck Schumer will be the key player, said McCain, noting that he will be the next Democratic Senate leader in his eventual decision on whether to back the president's premier foreign policy will be critical if done in Congress. In other words, if one of the only hopes we have to get out of an awful deal with Iran that should have never been made revolves around Schumer, that, friends, is awful news. And that, of course, it brings us to the dumdy of the day. And, of course, you know we have a dumdy of the day even on Fukushima, do we not? Of course we do. And we're going to get to it now. Friends, when I say dumdy, I do, in every way, mean dumdy. You'll be amazed at how dumb, friends. Should we trust Iran? Should we? Well, let's take another look at it, shall we? No nuclear deal, but Iran burns American flags on a holiday. Yep. The dumb deal of the day is for uh, John Kerry, among others, who have trusted Iran on this. Uh, closing out your massive Fukushima slash Iranian update. The Examiner, the Washington Examiner, millions of Iranians, writes Elizabeth, Elizabeth Potter, burned the Israeli and American flags. And posters of President Barack Obama in the street today in celebration of Al-Quds Day, an annual anti-American and anti-Israeli holiday. Why don't we give a nuclear bomb technology to somebody that would do this? This sounds like a great idea. The people chanted death to Israel. Oh, wonderful. And death to America. Oh, that's even better. As they gathered to show their support for Palestinian violence against Israel, according to the Times of Israel. That paper and others said that not just thousands, but millions of Iranians participated. Let's let them build a nuke plant, Sparky Shazam. Demonstrators chanted slogans and condemnation of the Zionists. Yep, 